I mentioned before, the text verses, verse 13, let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp bearing his reproach. And I think of that, that idea, that phrase, without the camp, without the camp. And uh, as we see, uh, we're gonna, as I read that verse and, and as I uh, put in my notes together, I couldn't help but think uh, there's three things that, that would that would entail as far as uh, uh, going uh, uh, without the camp with him, that go forth unto him without the camp. And as you know, serving the Lord, it, uh, it takes effort. It's definitely, serv- serving the Lord and living for him is definitely a life worth living. But it does take work. It does take effort on our part. And it, it, uh, we can't do it all on our own, obviously, as, as we know, uh, as Christians. But, but uh, we, we have the place where we can go to get all the strength we need, the help that we need, the guidance. And, uh, and, and everything that's needed, but, but we still have to put a uh, step forward, have a desire to walk with him, a desire to serve him. And we're going to see three different things uh, that, uh, that is required as far as if we're going to go without the camp with him. You know, there's a lot of things, <laughs> you think inside the camp, there's, uh, you know, uh, things you might find inside the camp. You know, it'd be a uh, provision. There'd be plenty of provisions inside the camp. There'd be uh, plenty of uh, uh, protection. But the thing is, it says we can go, uh, let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp. You're going to see few, three things that that, that, would, that would be involved in that. We see first separation. We see that right where it says without the camp, coming apart, be, or, uh, <laughs> separating ourselves with without the camp, separating from the world. As Christians, uh, you know that's something that, that that a lot of times Christians uh, they they want they they're saved they're they know they're on the way to heaven and uh you know they can tell you uh when they got saved and and uh and and they know for sure they're on the way to heaven but unfortunately there are many christians that although they're saved they still want to have one foot in the world they think that you know that's that's where happiness is that's where joy comes from and the devil's got them uh tricked them into to believing that we need to, but we need to be separated from the world. But we need to be separated also to God. Separate ourselves to God. Second Corinthians chapter 6, in verse 17 says, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. You know, we, <laughs> if we're going to have that victorious Christian life, that we all, you know, we, we go around, uh, raise our hand. Who wants to have a victorious Christian life? And I think we'd all raise our hands and say, you know, I don't think anyone says, you know what, I, I know I'm saved, but I want to be miserable and I want to live a, I, I want to have a defeated Christian life and be, and, 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 and never see those victories. You know, no one's going to say that. But there are many that don't, they don't want to separate themselves from the world. Many have that. Many Christians have a problem uh, being separated from the world. Uh, they want that uh, promise of salvation, but they don't want any of that pressure of uh, living a separated Christian life. You know, if I well, if I uh, try to live for Him, you know, what would maybe my family members say? What would my relatives say? My neighbors say? You know, uh, <laughs> Sam was talking in Sunday school about uh, his neighbors seeing him saying. Uh, you know, dressed up on Wednesday night going to church, you know, uh, the little kids saying, are, are they getting married again? You know, because they're dressed up. And uh, why? Because because they're his neighbors, you know, they, they see something different. You know, that's a little uh, different in their eyes. But the thing is, we uh, we need to be separate. We need to separate ourselves from the world. And he... <laughs> One thing you kind of, uh, Sam's lesson, uh, a lot of it went right along with, with the message as far as, you know, they, they're, <laughs> many Christians are, are drawn to the, the, the liberal, the churches that are compromising nowadays. 
They want that, that, a feel-good message instead of a live-right message. You know, they don't want something that's going to make them feel bad. They want to uh, they want to feel good when they come out of church. I think one preacher described it as uh, the churches as uh, come as you are, leave as you came sort of churches. You know, just you come and you put your time in, you know, you're there for an hour and uh, you can check that box. Yes, I went to church. But we need to uh, go and at, when we go to church, ask the Lord to, to work in our hearts and, and show us those things that need to be changed. That without the camp, there needs to be separation. If we're going to walk with him, if we're going to walk, uh, have that, that close fellowship with the Lord, it's not going to be while we're, while we're still courting the world. We need, to, we need to be separated. There needs to be a difference in our lives. We need separation. Not only that, what, what else is going to require? Not only does it require separation, it requires sacrifice. Sacrifice. Bearing his reproach, as it says, the last part of that verse. You know, we need to get, it's going to cost us something. What are we willing to give up for the Lord to be closer to him? Kind of goes along with that uh, separation. You know, what, what are we willing to give up? I think that's the problem. Many, uh, many Christians, they get saved and they think, you know, the only sort of fun, I guess you'd say, they had was, was in the world. So they think, well, you know, I don't want to give up that fun, but they, there's so much more to be had serving the Lord, walking with him. And it's, it, it got, we, they call it sacrifice for the Lord, but once again, it is totally worth it. You know, the, the old saying, uh, no pain, no gain. But the thing is, it, it's true. It might cost us something, but it but it's worth it's worth the cost. And there's so many that think uh, that the little trinket that they give the Lord is is you know they they think it's so much more you know they they think they're doing so much for the Lord when they give Him so little. C.T. Stud, Stud uh, the missionary to China and India and he went to Africa, he, he wrote, I'm getting desperately afraid of going to heaven, for I have had the vision of the shame I shall suffer as I get my first glimpse of the Lord Jesus. His majesty, power, and marvelous love for me, who treated him so meanly and shabbily on earth and acted as though I did him a favor in serving him. No wonder God shall have to wipe away the tears off all faces, for we shall be brokenhearted when we see the depth of his love and the shallowness of, our, of ours. You know, I believe that's true. So many Christians nowadays think that the, the, the little that they give him, the little that they sacrifice, you know, is basically that they're doing God such a great service. You know, here's a man that was uh, that <laughs> that was a missionary, and gave his life serving, uh, you know, on the mission field. But yet we think we think we're doing him a, a, uh, such a grand service by, you know, what uh, going and passing out tracts, or knocking on doors for a, for a while, or showing up to church. All the while thinking that we're, you know, aren't we, aren't we such great Christians because, you know, we, we gave him, you know, we gave him an hour. You know, we as Christians in, uh, in, in 2021 in America, I, we hardly know what sacrifice is. And anything that we give him is going to pale in comparison, you know, to what those have gone before us have given him. Like, isn't it sad? Those that have gone before him, uh, before us, and they they've sacrificed much more, some even death, and yet they thought, well, you know, I, uh, they had that mindset, you know, I wish I had more to give him. 
And then we, <laughs> we nowadays, Christians nowadays, have the mindset of, uh, I think I've given them enough. You know, it's going to cost sacrifice. You know, we, we, we want to, uh, as far as that bearing his reproach. You know, no one wants to, uh, to bear reproach. or uh, it, But you know what? Uh, when it comes to the things of God, they don't want to bear reproach, but, uh, you know, bring up their favorite ball team. You know, it's like, oh, <laughs> you say something about fill in the blank. And, uh, you know, uh, whether it be the Cubs or whether it be, you know, football or whatever it is. You know, you can't say that. that that's my team. You know, and, and, and you might uh, wear, wear uh, a jersey or a hat and it, it has your team. You say, well, well. The people around me, they don't like that team. And, and, and uh, you know, most people that are diehard fans say, well, I don't care. That's my team. And, and somebody might say something about that team. It's like, you know what? Uh, <laughs> uh, that's my team. Don't talk about my team like that. Or whatever it is. You know, you get into, uh, if you're into cars, you know, the, the Ford, Chevy, Dodge. You know, uh, you got your brand. And uh, that's, <laughs> you know, and uh, that's the one you're, you know, you're diehard that brand. I've had enough of them to know uh, the ones that my favor are, the one that runs the best, the one that's dependable. You know what? I don't care what brand it is. If it's dependable, hey, I like that one. And because uh, I've had plenty of them that, that weren't dependable. And uh, but uh, the, <laughs> the idea that it's going to we need to sacrifice It's going to cost us something. But are we willing to bear his reproach? We'll bear reproach for other things. Other things that won't amount to a hill of beans. They, they, you know, in a hundred years, it won't matter a bit. But you know what? If we'll bear his reproach, that's something that'll last through eternity. It'll co <laughs> it cost sacrifice. It's going to cost us something. But not only that, we see not only sacrifice, but it's going to cost us service. And it costs us service. You know, as far as uh, sacrifice and, and, and being separated from, from the world, it needs service. Uh, if you're going to uh, bear his reproach, you know, you have to have done something. You know, as far as we need to serve him. We have to, you're going to have to do something to, to, to suffer reproach, to bear his reproach. You know, the, the Christian that doesn't say anything, doesn't do anything, doesn't tell anyone, you know what, they, they, they pretty much, you know, they stay under that radar. Under the, you know, uh, you know maybe the, the critics at, uh, at work or maybe a family member uh, that doesn't believe, you know. Uh, but you know what, you start taking a stand for the Lord and you know what you're going to start bearing that reproach it's going to take serve you know start serving him you start serving the Lord and doing something for him you know what you're going to start drawing some of the devil's fire you see that uh, <laughs> when uh, it, how, we see it in mentions in the verse how, how that, that Jesus he was outside the gate in verse 12, it talks about that. You know, after he was beaten, after he was whipped and crowned with thorns, and he was mocked and his, his beard was plucked out of his face. Then he was led out of the city and crucified. And he died there, and, and he hung on a cross, and he died for you and I. But praise the Lord, he, he didn't stay dead. Three days later, he arose from the grave. And, we, and if we're going to, uh, it's going to take service. We need to serve. But the thing is, we need to remember that, that we don't have to do it alone. We don't have to go at it alone. We need to do it with the Holy Spirit's power. We might, we might have to sacrifice, but you know what? We have the Holy Spirit there with us. 
We have his power available. We have the comfort. We have everything that we need. We don't have to try to, to uh, you know, go at it alone in our own power and our own strength. In fact, if we do, we're going to fail. We're going to fail or we're going to uh, fail and end up giving up and, and being a casualty uh, alongside the road of life. But I'm afraid too many of us try in our own power to, to serve him. And that's why we don't have that victorious Christian life. Tozer uh, was quoted as saying, 95% of what is done in churches would stay the same if the Holy Spirit left. What's he saying? Too many of us, uh, too many churches are trying to do it in their own strength, in their own power. We need, to, we need to ask the Holy Spirit to lead us and to guide us and get the strength that we need from the Holy Spirit. I think, what was it, uh, I think Sam mentioned last week or two, something about uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit and how the, uh, <laughs> some of that, the charismatic seem to uh, hijack it, you know, being filled with the Spirit. We think that means, uh, you know, running around. And, uh, and, but the thing is, we as Christians, we need to be filled with the Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit's power. We need the Holy Spirit's guidance, the Holy Spirit's leading. And, 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 but the thing is, everything that we need to have that victorious Christian life is available to us. And yet we still try to do it on our own. How foolish that is of us. But are, are we willing to go without the camp? Oh, it's comfortable inside the camp. But are we willing to go without the camp with, in, in, with separation? Separate ourselves to him. Separate ourselves from the world. Are we willing to sacrifice and pay the price that, that it, it <laughs> one of these days in eternity we'll realize uh, when, once we get to heaven and see his face, whatever the cost you paid, is good. You'll say it will be worth it all. And down here, just for a while, it may seem, uh, you know, uh, like it, like maybe the price is almost more than we can bear. Or maybe, uh, you know, we think, well, you know, I don't want to do that. I want to en enjoy life. I don't want to serve God. But you know what? True joy comes from serving him. The separation is worth it. The sacrifice is worth it. And serving him is truly worth it. When you go w without the camp. And after all he's done for us, you know, how in the world can anything that he asks us to do, can we say, you know what, that's too much? You know what, that, that's, that's uh, <laughs> uh, God, you don't have any right asking that of me. Is it truly will be worth it all? The thing is, uh, we need to, uh, once we're saved, once we've asked the Lord to come into our hearts and save us, realize we're sinners, realize that Christ paid the price for us on the cross and he died and three days later rose again. And once we trust him, you know, we need to get busy and, and, and separate, our, separate ourselves and, and uh, <laughs> be willing to pay that sacrifice. And will be willing to serve him. And like I said, it, it truly will be worth it all when we see him.